The batteries is, is the least developed, but it's actually the most exciting, the most we get talked about, which is which is great because it's good to have that product which really has an almost unlimited market opportunity um, and, 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 and still some way to go to get to where we need to be, but it's also very, very exciting. So it's good to have the first two focused um, on, on revenue uh, and then the third one, well, that's kind of like the blue sky opportunity. My guest now is Craig Nickel. He's the founder and CEO of Graphene Manufacturing Group, trades on the TSX Venture under the symbol GMG and trades in the United States under the symbol GMGMF. Craig, welcome. Hi, James. Good to be back on. You bet. It's great to see you again. Craig, you just uh, yeah. announced a $10 million private placement, and that comes on the heels of your announcement that you're investing in your own pilot plant. Uh, is the $10 million raised to basically cover the initial cost of that plant? Yeah, great question. We're excited about the uh, the announcement on the raise, uh, the ten million dollar raise. We uh, the pilot plant is actually a, a small amount of money. It's not that much, so that'll be taken care of with existing funds. Um, the, uh, the the ten million dollar raise, we believe, will go largely towards building the larger production plant, which we hope uh, later this year or early next year will we will take into um, into an investment decision. Uh, which means that um, we're really, you know, following a complete successful, successful raise of this $10 million round. We're, we're really set up for success here, which we're very, very happy about. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so, Craig, you know, when I first met you a couple of years ago, the, uh, you had so many different sort of opportunities in the graphene space, coatings for air conditioning units, um, fuel mm -hmm. additives, and you know, you you name it. I remember being so excited about the company because there was just so many angles to the to the entire value proposition. Are all of those mm. different projects still at some point of evolution? Yeah. So we've we probably went through about two hundred different types of products. It, it was tested in twenty different countries, and we're really only focusing on three now. And one is our, our air conditioning coating system, and that is in um, mainly in Middle East, um, Malaysia, Southeast Asia, and Australia. Uh, and we're progressing, hopefully, into some type of near-term significant sales there. Uh, the second uh, topic or product that we're focused on is the uh, graphene lubricant concentrate. And that's where we're showing some really good um, results in, in showing reduction of, of friction in some some basals and engine oils for different companies around the world. Um, we're talking some very big names there. Um, and the third one is obviously our aluminium ion batteries. So we've got, um, from time to time, we still get amazing different opportunities proposed to us, uh, but we're very focused on those three and near-term um, material sales um, out of those. Um, and, the, and the batteries is, is the least developed, but it's actually the most exciting, the most we get talked about, which is, which is great because it's good to have that product which really has an almost unlimited market opportunity um, and, 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 and still some way to go to get to where we need to be, but it's also very, very exciting. So it's good to have the first two focused um, on, on revenue uh, and then the third one, well, that's kind of like the blue sky opportunity. Yeah. The, um, the battery is obviously attractive because you announced that it was, what was the energy density uh, coefficient to current lithium ion yeah it's it's somewhere similar to or, or around or just below it's about 150 to 160 um watt hours per kilogram so your, your lithium ions about 250 watt hours per kilogram to 300 watt hours per kilogram but we we likely won't have cooling um and so when you actually put the cooling weight into that energy density for lithium ion batteries, it brings it down to about 140 to 150 kilowatt hours per kilogram. So the net outcome will be around the same at, at the stance. What the little detail that often people miss is that that's at um, a very, our charging um, energy density is at a very high charging rate. Um, something close to, well, you know, easily 10 times more that you would normally see for another battery. And when you charge the batteries faster, they actually store less. So we've got to do a lot more work to show what happens when they have the normal charging rate energy density 
and therefore it will be the belief will be much even much higher than even where lithium ion sits even when you take the cooling out so there's there's really um you know a long way we can we can go with this um that's only initial testing data um so we're at or around where lithium ion batteries are right now um but we think in the future as we take more um, material out and get them optimized we'll continue to drive that energy density up um, the theoretical maximum is 1000 with these batteries mm. so it's about 1050 so the chance to really make a earth-shattering energy density battery you know is 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 there right and then the mm. other thing that's attractive to me that is not so much talked about is the idea that it's com- Composed of graphene and lithium as opposed to or sorry graphene and aluminum as opposed to lithium yes. and copper or lithium and cobalt and nickel yes. are nickel and yes. in cobalt components in your battery at all no and we don't even have copper either so it is a really simple battery made of two main components an aluminium foil um, and so our graphene is, is, is our main contributor and it's about three quarters of the battery weight and the rest of the battery weight is aluminium chloride and aluminium foil um, and they're relatively low cost and abundant, um, abundantly available and recyclable, which is fantastic for the earth and, and for our business. Um, so there's, there's real opportunity to, to make something that has really long lasting energy performance, energy density. Um, we have also a, probably one of the highest uh, um, power densities. Now that's not awfully talked about. So energy density is generally how far you can drive in a car, but power density is how fast, how fast you can accelerate. And our power density is extreme. It's it's something like um, 70 to 80 times more than the normal um, one, a normal lithium ion batteries. And so what that means is it can be charged much, much faster and also it can be discharged much, much faster. Um, and that's gonna be really helpful with um, electric aviation. Electric aviation really has got some issues with existing batteries and our battery will be able to fill that need um, and that's that's very useful for, um, say, electric um, planes, but also um, air taxis, which, you know, believe you me, it, um, in the next 10 years, we probably will see, see those around um, more and more. Uh, and also large drones um, and also large trucks. Um, so rigs will, will need um, very high, en- high power density batteries more so than current batteries out there and our batteries will provide that so we're, we've got a number of really large um, existing opportunities in personal electronics because the faster you charge your phone the faster people want to buy one right that's the first thing but then you've got all these new um, markets that are coming on that we believe our batteries are going to be quite uh, high performer for um, and then the third area I think which is really fascinating is, is IoT. So um, Internet of Things are going to need lots and lots of small batteries to power all these sensors, millions and millions of them. Um, and our battery is perfect for that because currently it's sitting at about 10 years lifespan with no issue. It could well go for another 10 or 20 years, we'll see. We've just, we just got to do all the testing. Um, and it's very high fast charging and very high fast discharging, which is also very good for IoT that can take a sudden hit and get recharged and move on. So there's there's three really large market sectors that our battery can go to. Um, but you know we're just going through. We're using our pilot plant, making some um, some some batteries for that uh, out of the pilot plant. Um, that should be finished and up and running in the next couple of months. We're still working with University of Queensland. They're obviously making our batteries as well. Um, and so we'll start issuing those coin seal samples by the end of the year, and then let's let's see where we get to with our um, you know, potential customers and, and the next stage production plan. You bet. I would think that mm. given the incredible cost savings, the improvement in energy density, the improvement in power density, that this mm. would be a, of extreme concern to the likes of Elon Musk and Tim Cook. Like, have, have, has Apple or Tesla or any of the major appliance manufacturers come to you and said, uh, look, we want to we get a piece of this now? 
Yeah, well, we've had many different types of um, companies, over 100, and honestly, it's probably nearing 200 now, um, companies around the world. We've probably had another 10 this morning who've just asked for partnership opportunities. Uh, that, will, we believe, will continue to happen. Um, I've never actually been in a marketing role. I've been marketing energy products for about 25, 30 years. <laughs> I've never been in a marketing role where the phone just doesn't stop ringing and there's just no way to supply or, or answer even all the questions that you get because it's your phone just doesn't stop um, being called by prospective customers. Um, with, you know, you can imagine the, the types of companies that, that, are, that are talking to us. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've got to complete on our battery next stage testing um, um, program, which is looking quite good. Um, Brisbane is, is now out of lockdown, so... That is really helpful to get our coin sales made. Um, we were in lockdown for the previous two weeks. That will enable us to get back out there and um, get the coin sales made, get the testing data, show that we understand our battery, which is really what these big companies want to see. They want to know that, that we understand our nanochemistry for these batteries. And, and we believe we do, but we first we've got to go through all of those program, those steps. Um, the big guys will take longer. Uh, that's always going to be the case, um, and and that's okay because we're, we're, we've got the team to, to deliver what we need to, to get them what they need, and um, we just got to go through the steps. But but now you know with this announced um, ten million dollar raise uh, on the back of a already well funded bank account from the previous raise, um, we feel like we're pretty much set up for success, which is really really exciting. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, all right. Finally, Craig, I'm just curious as to the level of protection that you might have in the IP department, because, you know, when you put out a press release saying that we are developing this graphene aluminum ion battery with the University of Queensland, I would think there would be a lot of people saying, hey, let's put our research department here to try to figure out how they're doing this. So is it, yeah. is it patented technology at this point or patent pending or what's the status yeah. of that? Yeah, so University of Queensland has had developed the technology and patented it. Um, we are under the license agreement. We are the funder of those patent rights. Um, so we, in com com combination with University of Queensland um, and their, um, their IP commercialization arm called UniQuest, are uh, the, I guess, the, uh, we meet to discuss on how we will, what's called prosecute the patent, which is to deliver to through to final um, patented outcomes in different countries. Um, we feel pretty confident. Uh, University of Queensland has obviously got a, a long list of amazing uh, nanomaterial and, and, and bi, um, uh, bioengineering um, uh, patents and that are long living in, in the world already. Um, um, including the, the, the cure for, for cervix cancer, which is quite an amazing um, accomplishment that was, that was actually um, patented or delivered and patented in, in, in the um, university institute that we're, we're getting our technology from. Mm. Um, but we'll continue to, to watch that space. Um, you know, we're, we're not anti-lithium ion battery, we're just for aluminium ion battery. Um, so we, we've just got to keep pushing our space and I think there'll be it'll be clear that our battery will perform at a point that um, really no other battery will be able to kind of compete. So it'll need, uh, in a way, new batteries to emerge to be able to compete with ours. Yeah. And and so we're not really um, against the existing establishment. We're often um, they may be best against uh, the new type of batteries that are yet to be announced or or being. Have been announced but haven't been maybe made as public as, as some others so because it, there really is needing a step change in batteries needed in the world um we need a battery which is more um more environmentally friendly it lasts longer we need a battery that is more um easy to charge and and is recyclable yeah. um and, and and has minimal footprint uh, on this world and that's what we believe we've got. Um, and I think there'll be others that'll come up and, and that's okay because the market is massive and there are so many applications yep. um, that, that we need as many awesome batteries as we can to you make bet. this happen. All right, Craig, we're gonna mm. leave it there for now. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for the update and we'll come back to you soon. 
Great. Thanks, James. Talk soon. All right. Bye for now. 